Hey, Vsauce, Joe here. Uh, we're not we're not doing that one. Oh, I was wondering why we're going to talk about stacking text animators. All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial about an idea that I had about stacking text animators. As I've explained before, if you take your text animators and you only make like one little movement in each animator, it's a lot easier to actually use them. So the idea here is to make presets based on those little movements so you can build up complex text animations more easily in the future. So here I have a simple animation just based off of a few different animators. But to get a different look, you can just turn off any of these different things. Like if you don't want this text offset, you can turn this off. If you don't want it to get wide, you can do that so that you can have a nicer animation in where you can go whole hog and throw them all on there. So if you want to make these things more convenient in the future, you can also throw on some sliders and use some expressions to link them to your animators. I've done that in another tutorial, so I'll link that below. Since it's always kind of a pain to set up a preset, I'll show you a real quick way to do it for these kind. First, for some reason, if you select your text animator first and then you select your effect when you make your preset, you're only going to end up with the effect. I don't know why. So select your effect first, and then hold command and click on the animator that you want to use. And then we're going to go to animation, save animation preset. I'm saving to a custom folder in my Dropbox. But if you're using AE2017, I think it still tries to save to the 2015 directory, so be careful for that. So I'm going to call this thing TXT, so that keeps them all together. And then I'm going to call this one X Scale. And then something you should always do because of how dubious it is to save these things is to actually test it. And thankfully, it should be under your recent animation presets as the first option. So let's add that in there, and we can see that it works. Test our slider. We're all set. So if we delete that and delete the animator that's attached to it, we can go up here and add other animation presets. So we can add that bump in. All right, so let's say we want to add our slide to that. First thing, though, don't have this selected because if you do, for some reason, it'll overwrite that. So just select your layer again. I don't know why that is, but hey, whatever. So now we can get that bump slide thing. So you can open up your keys and move them around so that they have them at different times. So you can get different looks out of just a couple of different animators. So by building a library of these, you can actually build pretty complex animations once you've taken the time to make yourself some presets. If you're a patron, I'll be adding these to the presets that you have access to and probably some additional ones over the coming weeks. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, but it should help speed up your workflow. Because if you're like me, you know it's a pain to animate text. It's something so important to design and something so annoying to animate. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.